Hi everyone, I am Matteo Collina and today I'm here to talk to you about GraphQL. This is the first video of a series uh, in which I will cover the basics of GraphQL, how to solve the uh, most common problem, the 1 plus n query problem uh, in GraphQL implementation. Uh, more or less I will talk about data loader if you want a little bit of a teaser. Last but not least, I will talk about the um, performance of GraphQL and how to implement a very efficient GraphQL uh, server implementation. So uh, let's get started. First thing, please of keep in mind, please follow me on Twitter at Matteo Collina, and please I will I tweet about uh, technology, I rant, I probably would post the URL of this video and more like this one, so please check it out. So um, let's uh, uh, let's get into, into GraphQL. So in, in GraphQL, um, GraphQL was born in an era of, uh, of REST services and you can, you know, you have probably implemented a lot of those services yourself. You can have a get, if you can have a get endpoint that uh, can, uh, that you can use to fetch a resource. Pretty nice, right? And uh, let's say that you want to uh, represent the entirety of Facebook. Now, how do you do that? Well, you know, let's say that you want to get your friends, your Facebook friends. And these endpoints return somewhat an array of some objects. It's a JSON, right? We invented JSON for that reason. We use JSON for that reason. So, um, however, I just want to uh, add the names. Now, you can see here that you have a lot of properties, thousands, hundreds of thousands of properties for all those things, and we just want the name, right? So maybe I add a new URL that get Facebook friends names, or... I add a query parameter filter to fill to only have the names. Pretty nice, right? So, um, you know, so what happens is that all of these is, no, is non-standard. And it's very hard to use if it's something, you know, um, it, it, how do you implement these every single time, every single application needs to reinvent the wheel, essentially. On top of that, we add this is the fact that most application needs to have to fetch more than one resource like you can get the friends but you also want the likes and the, your likes and you have two data now two piece of data that you want to load at the same time so you will issue two queries then to to rest call now you might know or these are not but your browser has a limited number of sockets that that you can talk to any single server so there is a big limit on how many of those you can run in parallel and on top of that, this can return the data at any given time and, you know, provide the user uh, not a nice user experience. So, and overall, just sending the data once and getting everything together might be better. So, in fact, in most of application, you will see that there is like URL, just new URLs get popped up every single time. So you can have a new URL of saying, get Facebook friends and likes. Hey, here it is. So I added one more. <laughs> Probably this is not scalable over time. So this is the problem that GraphQL would like to solve. So GraphQL, it's, it's a query language where you can um, essentially specify properties of some entities called types. Okay, uh, You can also specify uh, parameters on, on those queries, for example. And this, for example, is the execution of friends query. And this will say that you only return the name. So now you don't need to create new endpoints. So any new application, especially mobile apps that might want a different things or different UIs and so on, might want different data, you can only select the fields that you need. You don't need to recreate them all, to, to, to forward them all or implement custom logic. You can just use what you need. So this is pretty cool. Um, how do you define the, the queries and do this query? Well, you can first of all need to define the, your types. And for example, if you want to return, if you want to have a friend object, you need to define the type friend and specify the properties. So you have the name, the country, and the age. Pretty nice. And then you have the query, which is the, the type query contains all your top level queries. So you have friends, for example. And so you have friend as, and that returns a friend. Nice. Um, and so it 
it also means that we can actually issue two query at the call two queries at the same time. And this is one of the key things about GraphQL. So we can actually add more and more and more of things in parallel, to be honest. And I really like it because it allows you to fetch more data at the same time that you need, which is pretty powerful. On top of that, you also add, there is also uh, there is also the concept of um, variables. So you don't need to you can actually instead of concatenating the parameters in the right place, you can actually you just you know specify variables and those will be replaced. And this protects you against uh, injection-like attacks, which is pretty nice. Um, GraphQL has a really, really rich ecosystem, which is one of the reasons it became extremely power popular uh, throughout the web development community. And um, and this is because it makes prototyping really easy. Let me make um, so. Uh, well, well, you might ask why I'm doing this talk now. Well, uh, first of all. Uh, I'm doing this because I, I'm one of the lead developer of Fastify. It's a web framework that you can use in Node.js. It's pretty nice, and the, we want to have the uh, least overhead with the best user experience. So check it out. And um, I also created this module called Fastify-GQL, which is a simple implementation of GraphQL for Fastify. How do you use it? Well, you instantiate your Fastify server, then you define your schema, Specify the resolvers. This is how your um, uh, uh, you implement those queries and those types, and then you register the plugin, and then you call the uh, you can call the server. So it's pretty nice. And now it's demo time. So to do my demo, I will what I will do is I would use graphical. Graphical, it's uh, uh, embedded. It's something that is part of uh, it. It is part of the GraphQL package. You can install, install it, add it, where, whatever you want, and it's just a React component. The nicest things about this is that you can actually all of this is actually uh, GraphQL is actually self-defining, so self-documenting. So you can actually browse it and find everything. So, for example, here you will see that you have an add um, the add parameter with two things x and y and return an int. So what we can do, you can do add, and then you can say x2, y2, and then you can run this, and you will get 4. One of the nicest things is that you can run two things in parallel. So what you can do is you can 2 by 2, and, and then you, have, you can do 2 by 4, and... Here we go, and you can run those. Now, note you can this is just gets executed, and two types, two data got returned. It's pretty powerful and and handy. So um, uh, before uh, before finishing, I just wanted to add a little bit of consideration on where I would like to use where I like to use GraphQL. GraphQL has a greatest property, which is enables you to um, uh, read reduce communication between various parts of your company and various teams of your company. So let's imagine you are building a web app and a mobile app and you need to build a backend to support them both. Um, the needs for the web app and the needs for the mobile app are going to be significantly different. They might need the data formatted in a different way, they might need different endpoints, they might have a completely different user flow because you see if it's web and running on a browser on a desktop it have, will have a completely different user interface, likely, than a mobile on a, uh, on a phone. It's expected. So you might not need the same data at all. So this is actually pretty nice. And uh, you can actually do all those things um, uh, with... Uh, you can actually solve this problem with GraphQL because now the, the web can actually fetch the data the way they want and the mobile app can fetch the data the way they want. They don't need in, in any way or form to um, ask for a new endpoint. They might ask for new data to be added or to different operations, but they can construct the information they want in the way they want. So they don't need to add you, hey, please add me a new API, uh, which is typical a very typical problem. Um, that leads to the existence of, oh, I need a backend for my mobile app because the other one was not good enough, okay? Which is very common. Um, I just wanted to uh, quickly thank you all 
for um, thank you all for listening to my ramblings about GraphQL. Please follow me on uh, on Twitter at Matecolina. I just also want to thank uh, Nearform. Uh, I am a technical director there, and uh, we specialize in development of um, JavaScript and modern web application. And we are really popular. We are really um, uh, we do a lot of open source, including uh, uh, we support Node.js, Fastify, and many many others. So please uh, check us out. Uh, Thank you and bye-bye.